tonight, I want to build your faith. That's what I do. You can be seated. I'm going to tell you a quick story. And then we're going to close this out with, with God doing what he wants to do. Amen. With the exciting happening. With lives being changed. With miracles taking place. Amen. With people leaving different Amen. than the way they came in. Amen. Amen. I could tell you all night stories about healing. I won't do it. But I will tell you that when I was a little girl, that same grandma that testified and started singing songs about how the Lord brought her out, she cut her finger to the bone when she was chopping up a chicken. I was standing there. I had just received the Holy Ghost the week before. And I was standing there watching her cut up a chicken. You know, we used to have to cut chickens up. You youngins, all you do is go pick it out with no skin and no bones. Hallelujah, but it is the best, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm telling you, she was cutting it up, and the knife slipped, and it went to the bone, and blood started pouring out. And she wasn't excitable. She was just kind of a common sense woman, and she said, oh, I've cut my finger. I would have been screaming and calling 911 if I, it was me. But she said, give me your hand. You just got the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. See, a lot of times we want to run to the hospital before we pray. We got to pray first. And then if you need to go to the hospital, go. Don't be an idiot. But I'm telling you, sometimes the Lord's standing there. Ask me. Ask me. I want to do it. And so many times we try to figure it out. And I'm telling you, when I put my hand on her finger and we begin to pray in the powerful, all matchless name of Jesus, that finger went and sealed up. I'm telling you, I serve a God that can do anything. Anything. I see cancers fall off of people right here in this state. Sister Blaylock from Massillon, Ohio, was healed of breast cancer. I'm telling you, the Lord told me at an Ohio women's conference to go lay my hands on her. I did not know her then. And I walked across the whole hotel and laid my hands on her and began to pray. And she said, after church, how did you know my name? I said, I don't know your name. She said, well, my daughter was on this side and my daughter-in-law was on this side. And when you put your hand on me to pray, you said, Sister Blaylock, you're not sick. You're healed of cancer. Go your way rejoicing. I didn't know her name. I was speaking in tongues. But the Lord gave the interpretation. And when she went to the doctor the following Monday, they said, the cancer is gone. You're completely whole. You come too late to tell me that God does not heal. Amen. And you also come too late to tell me that he does not provide. Amen. He is Jehovah Jireh, yes. the God that provides. How do I know? Because he's my provider. How do I know he can do anything? Because I've seen him do it. You know, I had a dream. I don't have a lot of dreams, but this is what I want to tell you because I want to build your faith tonight. Everybody say, my faith is high. My faith is high. My faith is strong. My faith is strong. I believe God can do anything. I believe God can do anything. Amen. 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 I had a dream and it was so vivid. And in my dream, I was in a church and the church had an ugly, old, rickety, brown podium. It almost just looked like a cross with a little bitty thing on the top. It was rickety. And in my dream, I was standing there with my Bible and all my paraphernalia I bring, my glasses, my hanky, my water. And I was standing there and I was pointing my finger and I was doing this and I was speaking. And while I was speaking, there was windows on both sides of the church and there were elephants and giraffes walking by. And I was like, hmm, we're either in Africa or India in my dream. And then all of a sudden there was a huge cloud 
above the podium in my dream. And it was filled with faces of people that I knew had gone on to be with Jesus. It was the great cloud of witnesses. And I recognized former pastors that were gone on and, and, and relatives and things. And then they began to fade. And one of those faces started coming toward me and it filled up the entire cloud like the Wizard of Oz. It's this big head in this cloud. And it looked at me, and it was Sister Nona Freeman. And she pointed at me at that rickety little podium, and she said, give him Jesus, baby. Give him Jesus. Give him Jesus. Amen. I sat up, sitting on the edge of my bed, speaking in tongues. I called my sister, and she said, you're going to Africa. Get ready. Two confirmations, elephants and giraffes and Sister Freeman. Those are both in Africa. It was two months later, around Christmas time, I got the phone call from a couple that go to Brother Daryl John's church in Atlanta, Georgia. And they said, Sister Harding, we were both praying this morning. I was at the church and my wife was at home at the same time. And it was like neon lights flashed on the wall. And it said, take Karen Harding with you to Africa. They didn't really know me. I'd seen them one time when they held a revival at our church and they both asked me to go. They'd been a bunch of times, maybe 20 plus times to South Africa. I told them about my dream and we began to prepare and they told me that it was gonna be about $5,000. 3,000 of it is the flight and then there's about 2,000 more because we're there two weeks. It's hotel and food and offerings for the missionaries. And, and that's a lot of money if you don't just have it sitting around. Amen? If your last name's not Rockefeller. Hallelujah. And so I know a God, though, that can do anything. You see, how do I know? Because he's done it before. Yeah. There have been times I needed finance, and I prayed and asked him, and he provided you may think I'm weird, and you may not even ever want me to come back. You may tell your pastor bounds that this weird woman came that was awkward and <laughs> don't have her. No. no. But I'm telling you the truth right now. If I'm not, Lord, strike me dead. I'm telling you, I was at a church in California, and I had just prayed the day before, and I said, God, I need $1,300 yeah. to make the, the bills this month. I live on love offerings, and I go to churches, and sometimes they love me. Sometimes they don't. But you know what? Those churches aren't my provider. God is my provider. Amen. So I was out at the CD table, which, by the way, you need at least one of my CDs to go to heaven. <laughs> I was out at the CD table. And this man starts walking toward me. And my sister's there, and she's helping me sell CDs. And, and I see this man in my peripheral vision. I'm thinking, mm-hmm, he's homeless, mm-hmm. You know how we prejudge people? He starts walking toward me. He's in an old plaid jacket with dried food on the lapel. He had a good lunch somewhere. Hallelujah. And he walked over to me, and he had his hand full of something. And he just reached across the table and he put it in my hand. He said, you need this. He looked right in the eye. You need this. And you would be surprised what people hand me at the CD table. I didn't want to look at it right then. I just turned around, drop it in my handbag. And I turned around and he wasn't there. I sent men in the men's room. I sent people to the parking lot. I sent people all around. Nobody saw a man in a green plaid jacket. And then I said, okay. When I got in the car with my sister, because you never count the money till you get into the bathroom. So I, I got in the car and I said, I wonder what that man gave me. And I reached down in my bag and it was something with a rubber band around it. And it was green, the color of money. And I unwrapped it and I went, one, two, three, thirteen hundred dollars. The Lord delivered 